Okay, namaste. Namaste. Um, happy Blessed Panchami to everyone. I have not been one to accept blindly everything. Yes, there are certain things that cannot be explained, I will accept that. But if it can be explained, I will not accept it. <clears throat> Unless I get a proper explanation. Now the other thing that we have to bear in mind is that uh, when it comes to learning, there are two ways to learn something. By experience or by learning from someone else's experience. And fortunately or unfortunately, we mix that up every day. Because coming back to what we spoke about sometime last year, calm, crude, low, more mud, ahankar, those six things are a wall around us. That's our wall that we live within. We live within that because we want to do something. When we do it, no, greed kicks in. I want a profit. When I get the profit, then my pride kicks in. I did it. And when I repeat it and do it a few times, my ego, ahankar, kicks in. I'm a self-made man. I did it. I did it. Where in that whole equation did God come into it? There was no Bhagwanji's, by the grace of God, it was done. Because we're limiting ourselves in these walls. My belief is that if you're going to be a spiritual being, experience spirituality, use your religion as a foundation, as a basis, <coughs> because we have to have a comfort zone. We have to be at home. We have to have a home to live in. We live in our homes, we live within those walls, we live within these six walls. But we have to come outside of our home to experience the world. We can't just sit down from home and open the windows and say, hey, is it uh, hot outside or cold today? For me to know, I come outside. And when I come outside, oh, I'm feeling cold. Let me go back at my jacket. Oh, it's too hot, I don't need a jacket. I'll just throw it in the car, and I did that. I have a jacket in the van right now. In the event, in the evening, it gets cold. So we need to come out of these walls. But at the same time, if you don't want to go to that level and you're comfortable where you are, there's nothing wrong in staying where you are. So the thing is, we have to figure out now, are we going to learn on our own or from someone else's experience? So find someone that can help you do that. Learn. Someone that you trust, that you can do it. And I have four of them here that decided to trust me and follow along the, the, the teachings I give. So you've got to do that. Now, the knowledge becomes very important. Because without knowledge, you can't do anything. Go and speak to any professional. A doctor, lawyer, accountant, engineer. You go to an accountant, they will probably give you a bunch of terms. Well, what's your profit and loss statement? What was your balance sheet like? What was, and you know, accountants know the thing. Same thing, you go to a doctor, you know, they will tell you, well, you've got this, and they'll give you a bunch of Latin words we haven't studied. And I don't know if you say doctor in plain English, please. Oh, you got a cold, you know? It applies to even our pundits. Even our pundits do that. You go to them and they will start quoting you what the Ramayana says so, and the Bhagavad Gita says so, and so and so Puran says so. And what are you trying to say? Make sure you do puja every day. Couldn't you say that in the first place? <laughs> but no, we have to do quote all of that to show that we are first in that. So I am not going to quote to you any books because you are here, you've accepted that I know something. And uh, even though I feel like I know nothing, there's still so much to learn. There's so much knowledge out there, so much to gain. I don't feel like I know anything. One of the things that we have to be careful of now is terminology. Every profession you go to, the terminology is specific to that <coughs> profession. In our Hindu religion, in our Hindu culture, you have to understand what is a devta? What is a devta? A devta is one who gives. 
gives unconditionally. But you have to ask properly. You have to give them something in exchange for what they give. Every one of us hears that they've done. But we don't walk on the street and every person say, here's ten dollars, here's ten dollars, here's ten. We don't do that. We wait until someone asks. We don't just go around and give away anything we want to anybody. We wait till we are asked properly. And then we do that. And unfortunately, it's lost in translation from Devta to English to become God. And so our children get confused because now they learn we have 33 million gods. One God is one. We don't have that many gods. We have that many Devtas. The air around us is a Devta. So we have Pawan Dev. Because it gives us oxygen, it balances out the carbon dioxide, which we breathe out. And what does it require from us? Keep the air clean. Don't pollute it. The air does not clean itself. The plants do. So plants now become a devta because now they're doing something for us. They're giving us something. Sri Ram belonged to the sun clan. I said we all belong to the sun clan because without the sun, we can't survive. The plants that we eat get their energy from the sun. We eat the plants. We get our energy directly from the sun. So coming back now, so we understand Saraswati Mata is a Devi. And we pray to her. Why do we pray to her this time? What is special about spring? Spring is a time when the procreative forces in nature spring forth. Everything is procreating. Even as humans, we are driven by our hormones and in layman terms, by our animal instincts. Driven by animal instincts, we need to have knowledge how to control them. If we don't have the knowledge on how to control them, we know what will happen. <clears throat> so all these forces are coming out. They're telling you, this is what you've got to do. The plants, the fruits, you know, we have frogs in the backyard. You can start hearing the frogs now. Mm -hmm. croaking. The, the croaking is increasing. You start hearing the insects. <coughs> you start seeing the birds. You see everything. So we have all of this going on. And what do we do at this time? We pray to Saraswati Mata, give us knowledge. Give us guidance. Help us control ourselves. Let us not give in animalistic tendencies. So that is why we are praying in spring. Because when we, we pray to Durga Mata, we have Navratri twice a year. And for Lakshmi Mata, when do we pray? Diwali, towards the end of the year. And that too is, of course, another significance that we're not going to get into right now. So, praying to Saraswati Mata this time is very important. And yellow, yellow is a color which I believe she's covered uh, pretty well, why we use yellow, yellow and white. So the important thing is, we know what is happening around us. We need the guidance. We can learn by experience, or we can learn from someone else's experience. And the most important thing we need is a devta, or Bhagavanji's guidance. So when we are sitting here, we're praying, we're praying to Saraswati Mata to guide us, we're gonna get guidance. The guidance we get is age-appropriate guidance. You're young, study. You're in the family holder's life, think about your family. If you don't have a family, and you're newly married, this time we usually recommend you start thinking about it. Those are the first that are found crusty. Now we are told, okay, you've given a family life, you're giving a family life. Now start thinking of ways to get out of that six-sided box. Start being a little more spiritual being. That God gives us a minimum 
of two choices, a minimum of two choices at every time we want to do something, a minimum. And you may say, well, death is not a choice. It is a choice. If you have a headache, what do you take? A pain killer. What does a killer do? It kills. If you're taking something to kill yourself, why are you blaming somebody else for your death? You know, a lot of things we do, we do like that. And if you were to give a child uh, chocolate and broccoli on a plate, <laughs> what do you think they're going to choose? Broccoli. More than likely, <laughs> chocolate. But how many choices do we have? We can choose the chocolate. We could choose the broccoli. We could choose to melt the chocolate and put in the broccoli. Yeah. Or we could choose none. Not to eat any. So we've already got four choices there. There are four choices. And maybe there may be more choices that I haven't thought of because I'm not really a, a very good cook like my wife is. She could probably come up with some recipe incorporating them and say put a little masala here, little thing there, and make some things. I don't know. But we've already got four choices there, which is two things. Even with the chocolate, if you just gave a chocolate, two choices. Do I take it? Do I not take it? Do I eat it? Do I not eat it? Everything you do, you've got a minimum of two choices, including dying. Should I die today or should I live to see another day? If I want to live to see another day, what do I do? I'm not feeling well, I go see a doctor. If I don't want to live anymore, I don't see a doctor. <laughs> Again, it's my choice. So how do you know the best way to make the choices? That is where, again, we pray to Saraswati Mata to guide us, guide our intellect to make the right choices. And it is very important that we pray to her. So if we ask her properly, nicely like we did today, she will give. And that's one of the questions that a lot of kids have asked her. Brahmaji gave bones to Ravan, he gave bones to, to Kumkaran and everybody. But he knew what they were going to do with the bones. Why did he give it to them? Because they asked nicely. <laughs> you know, that's his job to give it to you. If you ask nicely, so even if your enemy comes to your door and they were to ask you nicely, can I get a glass of water? What would you say to them? Slam the door in their faces, get out. No. Chances no, you'd say, okay, here's the water, and then slam the door. <laughs> but the thing is, if someone asks you nicely, you generally tend to give them what they want. So with that, I just want to say, I hope you understand why this is the most appropriate season to pray to Saraswati Mata because we need the guidance to keep us away from animalistic tendencies. But I want to wish everyone a very happy Basant Panchin. Namaste.